It's called Catastrophic Outcomes of Non-Cardiac Surgery Soon After Coronary Stentin by Calusa. And what he did was he took patients, he did angiograms, he did PCIs on them, and then he waited up to six weeks, turning off the platelet inhibitors and operating. And what he found was that there was a 20% mortality. If he did this the day prior to surgery, all of them died. Okay? One of the most dangerous things you can do is put an intercoronary stent in, turn off the platelet inhibitors, and then operate on somebody. Now, what about angiography itself? Well, contrast nephropathy in about 3% of women, 1% of men. There's hemorrhage, there's coronary perforation in half percent of people, and there's some risk of death associated with angiography. Here's a paper which you should look at carefully. This is the 23 studies comparing PTCA to PCI. Okay? They have these wonderful names like BOSS, EpiStent, FROST, Destini, SPACTO, TOSCA, MAGIC, PASTA, GRAMI, FRESCO, CADILLAC, and BSPART. These are great cardiology studies. 23 studies, 10,000 patients, 5,000 randomized to each group. And what they found was that there was no difference in the death rate of PTCA versus PCI. Now, I might have stopped after 22 studies, but this is not a compliment. Okay, next. Here's a study that's even more kind of disturbing. This compares the risk of death for patients who need a cabbage when they're randomized to either cabbage, PCI, or medical therapy. It's by Hube et al. And what they found after a year was that 4% of the people in the cabbage group had died, 45 in the PCI group, and 1.5 in the medical therapy group. So your mortality was increased by having these therapies. Next slide. What about if you go out five years? Well, if you go out five years, there's a benefit of cabbage or PCI over medical therapy. But when you get to eight years, next slide, there's no significant difference. So if a patient plans to live exactly five years, this is a great therapy. Okay? These therapies are designed for symptoms. They're not designed to prolong life. So there's no survival advantage or MI benefit to cabbage or PCI over medical therapy at one year. There's no benefit to cabbage over medical therapy, no benefit of PCI over medical therapy. There's no test that can prove who's going to have a cardiac event. And the risk from perioperative medical therapy for coronary disease is lower than the risk of risk stratification plus cabbage or PCI. And the risk of PCI followed by surgery is the greatest of all. Next. Now, some people don't believe me. Some people say, oh, he's got to be wrong. You know, what are we going to do? Well, the VA does, did a great thing. They did the CARP trial. And this is not about a fish. This is the coronary artery revascularization prophylaxis trial, multicenter randomized prospective trial done in the VA. What they did was they took people coming for AAAs or AFBGs. They did an angiograms on all of them. Those who had a positive angiogram were randomized to either PCI, cabbage, or medical therapy. And they asked the simple question, can the risk of cardiac surgery plus the risk of the subsequent operation be ever less than the risk of just doing it? And the answer is no. Okay? They also followed these people out to three and a half years to see if there was a long-term benefit, and the answer was still no. So what are we left with? histories and physicals, a bunch of risk factors, and then good anesthesia. And when I talk to anesthesiologists, I ask people for a show of hands, how many decide to give lousy anesthesia because the tests were normal? Nobody does this, and I don't need a fancy test to worry. I'm good at worrying, okay? But I want you to avoid myocardial ischemia. This is easy to do, very simple. All you have to do is avoid tachycardia, hypotension, hypertension, pain, hypercoagulation, vasospasm, and tissue injury for like a week before and a month after surgery. Okay? Well, we did you a very nice favor. We did 17 randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, and we looked for every possible thing we could think of to deal with ischemia. We looked at heart rate control, stress hormone release. Other people looked at vasospasm. We looked at vasodilators, anticoagulants, another vasodilator, pain, anesthetics, more vasospasm, inflammation, 
COX-2s, everything. Everything we could possibly think of. And at the end of this, we found two drugs, atenolol and clonidine, which reduced the risk of surgery. And I'll show